Hey guys, Chris Fix here with our seventh annual top five Christmas gift ideas for car guys and car girls like you. Check it out. Now this year, just like all the other years I've done this, I've come up with some really helpful gift ideas for anybody who likes to work on their own car. And not only are they helpful, but they're unique, they're different, there's stuff here that you don't already have in your toolbox. And I'll be sure to link all these gift ideas down in the description and in the pinned comment so you could easily find it. That's why I've done this for the past six years. I wanna make this as easy and fun as possible for you guys. Stress-free is important because I know how the holiday seasons are and that's the whole point of the video. So, with that said, we got a lot of really cool gift ideas. They're not sponsored they're all things I think you'll like and I have some special ones this year and I'm super excited I'm like a kid on Christmas I can't wait to show you so let's get to opening these gifts now before we open all the main gifts real quick I have something super special I've been working on for over a year that I think will be helpful for all the kids out there so let's open this up All right, how to change a flat tire by me. Yes, I published a book. It is on Amazon. It's fully published. It's ready to go. It is a children's book, and I don't want to spoil the surprise. We'll just flip to a random page, but uh, it is all about how to change a flat tire, and it also teaches kids that they could help others with a positive attitude, and anybody could be a hero. Now, this book is for like 8 to 10-year-olds and under. If they can't read, don't worry. I came up with a cool idea. I have a QR code you could scan, and it goes to a video of me reading the book with some sound effects, and this doesn't break the bank it's 9.99 I'll be completely transparent with you guys I make a little over a dollar a book I need to sell over 4,000 just to break even and it's not about the money it's about getting the younger generation into cars and also teaching them the basics of useful life skills so anyway just want to show you that real quick I've been working on this for so long I hope you're excited as I am it makes a great gift idea for the young ones and now let's actually get started opening up our first gift all right the first gift idea I wonder what it could be Okay, a ratcheting flare nut wrench set. And check it out, this is really nice. But wait, there's more. Okay, so it's got Chris Fix on the box. And check this out, an extendable ratchet set. Oh man, would you look at that, this looks so nice. So let's start out with our ratcheting flare nut wrench set. And this I like a lot because most people aren't gonna have these in their toolbox. This is more of a specialty tool. What most people are gonna have are these. This is a typical flare nut wrench set. You can see they have the double-sided flare nut wrenches. Very useful, but they don't work in every situation. And these right here, these could save you a lot of time and a lot of grief. So real quick, if we take a look under the hood, right over here is our master cylinder. And then right here is a distribution block. And on the distribution block are some brake lines and you can see there are flare nuts and those are really difficult to get to there's not a lot of room in here so let's just say we want to remove this flare nut right here to replace this brake line or maybe we want to bleed the brakes whatever it is what you do is you get your flare nut wrench put it over the line like that and get it on the flare nut now we need to loosen this and you can see as we're loosening it hits this sensor right here there's no way we could loosen it so if we try to find the next spot we can't because now it hits the master cylinder there's brake lines in the way if we come on this side we got a spot right right here, but again, we're hitting the master cylinder when we try to loosen it, so this isn't gonna work. But with one of these ratcheting and swiveling flare nut wrenches, we could get it on here, and there we go. And look at all the room we could create because it ratchets, so we have plenty of room for a swing here. I could actually probably loosen this. There we go, you could see, I could loosen it, and that is awesome. Now, I don't wanna loosen it all the way because I don't wanna get a ton of air in here. But again, tightening is just as easy, slide it on, and since it ratchets, look at how simple that is. Now you might be wondering, how do you get this off the brake line when it's completely ratcheted like that? It's closed off. Well, all you have to do is spin that ratcheting mechanism and now it comes right off. And that's the perfect example of where this tool comes in handy. Now, are you gonna use this every day? Probably not, but when you do need it, it's gonna save you and it's gonna be completely worth it. You'll be glad you had it, trust me. And that's exactly why this set made the list. Now, speaking of tools that you could use every day, this is something I'm super excited about. This is the three-piece Chris Fix extendable ratchet set. We have a half inch, three-eighths inch, and quarter inch extendable ratchet. And what that means is, sure, you could use a regular ratchet like this, but if you need more leverage to loosen up a bolt, this extends out and it locks in place. That way you can loosen up those hard to remove fasteners. Now, this is the half inch, just to show you the three-eighths extends out that far, and then the quarter inch, extends out that far. 
Another really nice feature about this tool set is something I like a lot, and that is foam tool trays. And this is great because, first off, you can see when you're missing a tool. It's very easy to identify real quick, and it stores it very nicely. We have the Chris Fix logo here, out with the old, in with the new, and you can put it in your toolbox horizontally or vertically like that. So you can just throw it right in your toolbox in an open spot, now you have your extendable ratchet set nicely organized in your toolbox. Now, just to be clear, this isn't some junky rebranded tool set that some YouTuber is trying to peddle to you. You guys know I'm not like that, and I always go above and beyond with everything I do, and I won't put my name on just anything. It has to be really good. So to make sure it's good, I purchased a bunch of different extendable ratchets from different manufacturers and tested them out for the last three years. While this might look the same as the Chris Fix ratchet, it is completely different. It's from a different manufacturer. Look at how much play there is in this head. That drove me crazy as I was testing it out. I'll be honest, it didn't break or anything. It just, there's a lot of play in here. Even when it's fully opened, look at how much play there is in here. That is just too much and I didn't like how it felt. Now compare that to my ratchet. You can see there is very little play in the head when it's closed, and when you fully extend it, again, very little play. It is fully extended, it's very solid, and it just feels way better. So here's another ratchet. You can see the play in the head. That is just, it just doesn't feel good. It feels cheap. So again, I paid close attention to the tolerances here. You can see how much sturdier that is, and it doesn't move around. And with the collar here, when you open it, it's solid. It snaps into place you get that solid snap, that way you know it won't come loose. So you would never use a regular ratchet to try to loosen up lug nuts because if you tried, oh man, they are, you don't have any leverage. It's just super tight on here and that's not the only one that's tight. <laughs> They're all really tight. But with the extendable ratchet, what you could do is once you get it on there, you could extend the ratchet and with the ratchet extended and locked in, now you have a lot more leverage and it's a lot easier to remove those lug nuts. Every single one is gonna come off pretty easy. Watch this, one hand, boom, not bad at all. And that's the power of leverage. So you can see that caliper bolt back there. Normally you wouldn't try this with a regular ratchet. You'd go right for the breaker bar, the impact. But I'm gonna, <coughs> I'm gonna try to push down. Oh, there's nothing there, there's no way. There's just not enough leverage. Now we can get our extendable ratchet on here. And then once it's on, pull that collar back and extend this out. And this should give you the leverage you need, yep, there you go, to break that loose, no problem. So I think you get the idea. This is something that you guys could actually use. It's high quality, it's a very nice set, and it comes with a limited lifetime warranty as well as first edition etched into the first couple. So I hope you guys like it. And with that said, let's move on to the next gift ideas. All right, now while this is called the top five Christmas gift ideas, I do like to include something called stocking stuffers, which are just smaller, typically less expensive gifts that kind of go with the first major gift and it's just something extra for you guys so we use cooper's stocking to open up the gifts and you can see cooper knows that's his stocking and we have our first stocking stuffer so cooper's gonna do the honors and open it up okay cooper this is all you oh man this is a good one a reverse brake bleeder nice so normal brake bleeding does work, but sometimes you just can't get all the air out, which is where this comes in handy. With normal brake bleeding, somebody's gonna push down on the brakes, you're gonna crack that bleeder valve open, the brake fluid's gonna come out, you're gonna close it, and then tell that person to let off the brake. And then you're gonna repeat that process over and over until all the air is out of the system. Now normal brake bleeding definitely works, but sometimes it's hard to get a solid pedal. You have all these loops with brake lines and the ABS that sometimes the air just gets stuck and normal brake bleeding just doesn't do the trick. And that's where the reverse brake bleeder comes in handy. Let me show you how this works. So first, get the hose that sucks up the new brake fluid into our brake fluid container, just like that. Next, we wanna get all the air out of our reverse brake bleeder, so we're just gonna pump it a couple of times so that all the air gets forced out and is straight brake fluid. Now we could take the cap off the bleeder valve, then we could attach the reverse bleeder onto the bleeder valve, and finally crack that bleeder valve open, like so. Now all we need to do is just pump that fresh brake fluid into the caliper and that pushes the air up and out of the master cylinder. So that's all it takes to get a firm pedal. Now just tighten the bleeder valve down, remove the hose, and reinstall the dust cap. And that's how easy it is to use the reverse brake bleeder. You could use it by yourself, you don't need an extra person, and it gets that trapped air out of your brake system, giving you a firm pedal, and that's exactly why it makes the list this year. All right, gift idea number two. Let's see what we have here. It's a pretty big box. 
Okay, now this is a great idea, an extractor vacuum. Now, extractor vacuums are game-changing. These are no regular vacuums. They work amazing, let me show you. Now, a normal vacuum sucks all the loose dirt and dust out of your seats or your carpets, and you think it's pretty clean, but realistically, it's not. There's still dirt stuck in those fibers, and there's only one way to get it out, and that's to extract them. And to do that, you would use something like this. This is a water injection carpet vacuum. This works amazing. I love these things. So how this works is on this side, we have a reservoir for soapy water, plain water, whatever water you want. And then we have a specialized hose that shoots the liquid out that we have in this container and then sucks it up with this special nozzle and puts it in here. Let me show you. So when you press the trigger, water shoots out like so. And all you need to do is press that trigger and slowly drag the nozzle along the carpet with a medium downward pressure. And what's happening is the water's getting injected into the carpet, it's dissolving and loosening up any of the dirt, and then we're sucking it back out. And you can see the dirty water getting pulled out of the carpet and leaving behind a nice clean carpet. And I don't know about you guys, but for whatever reason, this is super satisfying. You get such a deep clean, and you can see it's actually working. And after you let that dry, look at this carpet. It literally looks brand new. But even better, take a look at the recovery tank. Look at all the dirt we extracted from the carpet, and that's going to remove the smells and make the carpet look that much cleaner. Now you can use this extractor on other parts of the car, like the seat belts, which are always touching your body so they get disgusting. Even if they don't look that bad, trust me, they're dirty. I mean, look at all the dirt that just came out of that one seat belt. Same thing with the floor mats. I like to power wash my floor mats to get them extra clean, and then you just extract all that water out so it doesn't get all moldy and it's dry. And if you have any smells in the car, this is how you get rid of them. Using air fresheners, just cover the smells. The extractor vacuum works deep into those fibers, and you can just see, look at all that dirt that was hidden in these carpets. And finally, I don't know if you guys remember these dirty seats from Susan. Well, they look that good because I used the extractor vacuum. So the proof is in the pudding. These extractor vacuums work great at deep cleaning, and they also work inside the house on your carpets, on your rugs, stuff like that. And that's exactly why they made the list this year. Okay, Cooper, our second stocking stuffer. Let's see what we got. Good boy, Coops. Okay, we have an extractor attachment. That's a good idea. But wait, there's more. Okay, a steam cleaner, nice. Now this vacuum attachment is the perfect stocking stuffer. It's small and it turns something that you might already have, a wet dry shot vac, into one of those extractor vacuums. Plus, I really like this nozzle. It's clear so you can see everything getting extracted out. Let me show you. So first, spray down the base of the seat with soapy water or whatever cleaner you want to use. Then I like to brush the cleaner into the seat and agitate all that dirt stuck in there. And then finally, we could use the extractor attachment with the shot vac to suck all that dirty water out of the seat. And just look at how great this works. The good thing about this is we're able to use all that suction power from a shop vac, which is a lot more powerful than one of those smaller extractor vacuums I just showed you. So that way we could really get in there and get all that dirt sucked out of the seat. And a nice thing about the attachment is because it's clear, you're able to see all that dirty water getting sucked out. So this attachment really allows you to get your seats or your carpets or whatever you're working on super clean. And the proof is in the pudding, check this out. This was clean before I used it, and you can see all that dirty water we pulled out of the seat. So our seat came out awesome, that was a quick and easy thing to do, and this attachment is great, and that's exactly why this made the stocking stuffer list this year. Now, a steam cleaner is also a great tool for those who like to detail their car. Let me show you. Just add plain water to the steam cleaner and screw on the top, and then all you need to do is plug her in, and after a minute or so, she's ready with some very hot steam. Now, I have the perfect test for the steam cleaner. There's this rubber liner here with grimy melted candy and it's disgusting, so let's clean it. So all you do is use the pressure and heat from the steam to melt the sugars and blow it off the rubber. Remember, this is boiling water, so be careful because it's very hot. But you can see how well it works to push all this crud off the rubber. And not only are we cleaning the crud off, but we're also sanitizing the rubber. And just like that, all that caked on and melted chocolate and candy was steam cleaned right off. And that's exactly why a steamer made the list this year. All right, gift idea number three. Let's see what we got here. Okay, a cordless tire inflator. Let's see what this other one is. <laughs> Makes sense, that tire inflator's bigger brother. And finally, one last one. And again, another tire inflator. There's a reason why I have three of them. Let me show you. Now, you used to have to pull out the giant air compressor, dragging the extension cord, and then firing this thing up would wake up the neighborhood just to inflate a flat tire. But not anymore. 
So technology is amazing. Now you can pump up your tires using these small cordless units. And I have three different ones here because we have different price points. We have the most expensive, but also a professional tool. This is the M18 Milwaukee, and it is great. It's probably the best one here. But then we have at one third of the price, the Ryobi 18 volt, which is also a great tool, especially if you're just doing stuff at home. And then we have that middle ground. This is a 12 volt, M12 Milwaukee, so it all depends on what your budget is. Let me show you how these work. So first, I'm deflating my 32 inch truck tire down to 10 PSI to test each tire inflator. First up, we have the M18 and we'll set the pressure on the pump to 35 PSI and see how long it takes. The noise level is 83 decibels and it takes the pump three minutes to completely inflate the tire. This battery was freshly charged and now it's down 25%. That's pretty good. Next, let's test the Ryobi inflator. The noise level is 10 decibels less at 73 decibels, which is a big difference. But this pump took three times as long to inflate the tire, which is also a big difference. And this battery, which was fully charged, is now down 50%. And finally, let's test the M12 inflator. The noise level is at 76 decibels, and it takes a total of seven minutes to fully inflate the tire. The M12 batteries don't have an indicator on it, but the inflator does and it says it's at 50% charge. So all three of these are great choices, but the M18 is definitely the quickest at pumping up tires. So pretty much all the power tool companies make these inflators and these are great. They're quick, they're cordless, and they're tiny, and that's exactly why they make the list this year. All right, Coop, what do we have for our third stocking stuffer? All right, a lug torque wrench. Now this is a pretty cool stocking stuffer. What it is, is an old school lug wrench like this and a torque wrench combined into one tool to make removing and installing wheels that much quicker. So if you're still using one of these old school lug wrenches, it might be time to upgrade. <clears throat> so with the lug torque wrench, you could slide the handle all the way out and it locks in place. And now you have the leverage you need to break loose any lug nuts on your wheels. Once you break them loose, now you can slide the handle to the middle position, and now you can spin the lug nuts right off quick and easy. The handle has bearings in it, which allows the tool to spin freely and unscrew those lug nuts quickly. And then you guys know, after all the lug nuts are removed, you can remove the wheel and do whatever work you need to do. And then a few Chris Fix videos later, with everything all fixed, you could get that wheel back on. And now tightening down those lug nuts is quick and easy also because you could let the tool spin freely in the other direction. So tighten down all the lug nuts by spinning that wrench, and now let's torque them down to spec. Now to set your torque, you look in this window and then you press this dial in and then you spin this until you get to the desired torque. Now these wheels get torqued to 100 foot pounds, so we're gonna spin this all the way until this reaches the zero at 100, just like that. And now our torque is set. So if you work on your car at home and you're still using the old school lug wrench like this, it might be time to upgrade to a lug torque wrench like this. You saw how easy it was to remove the wheel and then put it back on and torque it all in one tool. And that's exactly why this tool makes the stocking stuffer list this year. Okay, gift number four. Only one more after this. Oh nice, a knife and tool sharpener. Now this knife sharpener is an awesome gift idea because of how versatile it is. So everybody has kitchen knives, it sharpens kitchen knives. Everybody has scissors, it sharpens scissors. If you have multi-tools or pocket knives or hunting knives, it'll sharpen those. If you have lopers or gardening tools that could use sharpening or an ax, it'll sharpen those. Your fillet knives, if you like to fish, you know how important it is to have a super sharp fillet knife, it'll sharpen those. So let me show you how this works. So one of the first things I learned in culinary school is Dull knives are more dangerous than sharp knives. They cause a lot of injuries, and this knife is very dull. Let me show you. If I try to cut this lemon, <laughs> it doesn't cut. Look at how much pressure I'm putting on here. You have to really push hard for this to cut through that thick rind of that lemon. So let's sharpen this blade. To sharpen, start with the butt of the knife against the sandpaper. Then you wanna pull the trigger and turn that sharpener on and pull the knife back slowly to sharpen the blade. Try to pull it at a constant speed. Doesn't have to be perfect. Now, once you get near the end of the blade, keep the tip against the sandpaper and shut the tool. And that'll ensure that you maintain that sharp tip. Now, we could do the same thing on the other side. And depending on how dull your knife is, you might have to repeat this process a couple times, working back and forth. For example, a really dull knife will need this five times each side, and that's exactly what I'm doing. Now, you might be wondering how long these sandpaper belts last. I haven't worn through any yet, but the instruction manual says it'll take about 75 knives to sharpen before you need to replace the belt, and it comes with extra belts in the kit. So you should be good for a long time. 
So let's finish up this side. Good, and now let's see if the knife is actually sharp. And if that's not proof right there, I don't know what is. That is super sharp. Now you can sharpen other stuff as well, like scissors, and that gets done right here. So place the blade down here and follow the same process. Then we can flip the scissors around and sharpen the other blade as well. And just take a look at that nice fresh edge this gives the scissors. And finally, you could take the blade guide off and then push the button here and rotate the tool until it snaps into place like that. And now you could sharpen larger blades like this loper or a lawnmower blade or even a hatchet. And after a real quick sharpen, this blade has a fresh edge and looks good to go. And as you can see, it sharpens a bunch of different knives and tools and makes them really sharp, which is exactly why it made the list this year. Okay, Cooper, stocking stuffer number four. Let's see what we got. Cooper, hey, Coop. No, 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 we gotta do this one first. Okay, so Cooper wants to do this first, so what do we have? Nice, a metric nut and bolt gauge. That's gonna be useful. And how about this one? Awesome, so this one is an SAE nut and bolt gauge. Okay, and how about the one I wanted to open up first before Cooper took charge? All right, a Leatherman multi-tool, I love these. Now I've used tons of multi-tools, this one right here is my favorite one, made in America, 25 year warranty, and I wear this all the time. Now full disclaimer, this is not new, I've used this for the past three years, almost every single day, it's been used in salt water all the time for when I'm fishing and boating, and I actually got a second one because I like it so much, and this one I got my name engraved on the blade. Now this tool is 21 tools in one, it has the belt clip right here, which is how I wear it, but if you want it to be more secure you could use the sheath, and this tool is primarily a needle nose pliers. You can see it locks in place, it's not spring loaded, so you have to open and close it. This tip is well designed, so it actually closes down accurately and tight. And the middle part here is designed to grab onto nuts and bolts so you can loosen them up just in case you don't have your socket set. Next, you can see the replaceable cutters in there, and this is made to cut metal wire. For example, I use stainless steel fishing wire for shark fishing, and it cuts it no problem. And at the very end, there's a little gap so you could strip wire. Let me show you. So get the end of the wire in here, clamp down, and then spin the multi-tool back and forth to cut the wire insulation, and the insulation pops right off. So not a bad tool to have, just in case you need it and you don't have your wire strippers. So I think you get the idea, it has a nice pliers. Let's collapse this down and let me show you the tools on the side here. So we'll start off on this side and you can see every single tool that you open up locks into place. What you have to do to unlock it is press down this little button here and now it unlocks and collapses back in. So the first tool we have here is a saw and as you can see the saw works pretty well. You're not going to build a log cabin with it but you could cut firewood or cut things on the fly when you don't have a big saw with you. So we have a pick with a little hole in it. We have a ruler, both centimeter and inch, and a flat head end, as well as a wire strippers right there. We have a file, and this file actually works. And I find myself using this file more often than I thought I would. It's really good at removing corrosion from metal. And as you can see, it works pretty well. And finally, we have our serrated blade. And I use this to cut bait all the time. It cuts right through the meat, and it'll even cut right through the bone because it's serrated. And that is the first side, now the second side. So on this side we have a scissors, and this is great, it's spring loaded, and it's awesome at cutting zip ties. So if you wanna cut the end of a zip tie, make sure it's flush, and it makes it so it's not sharp at all. Now we have a Phillips head and flat head screwdriver. The Phillips head has a little can opener piece right there, and then we have our regular blade, which is really sharp. Again, locks in place. Anybody who gets this as a gift is gonna absolutely love it, and that's exactly why it makes my list this year. Now the next stocking stuffer is a great tool to have in your garage. We all have that bag full of bolts, or maybe two, or I could probably just keep going. And sometimes you need to figure out what size bolt you have. For example, this one right here. So this is really simple, I'm gonna show you real quick. You just wanna find the hole that the bolt will thread into. You can see the 12 millimeter is too big, so we'll go down to 10, and this is 10 millimeter extra fine, and you can see how it gets stuck, it doesn't turn, so it's not extra fine. Now if we try to 10 millimeter 1.25, and a little bit better, it's still too tight. So we'll go to the last one, it's gonna be 10 millimeter 1.5 coarse, and you can see this screws in no problem. And now we know exactly what diameter and thread pitch we have. Now we could do the same thing with nuts. You can see we have an old castle nut, maybe you need a new one. Okay, that's too small. If we go here, oh, that might fit. No, that's way too tight, so it's not a coarse thread, so it's gonna be 14 millimeter fine, perfect. And that's exactly what we have. So that's how you use this tool. It saves you so much time and it makes it so easy to find the correct size fastener. That way you're ready to go. You can write it down. You know exactly what you need to get either in the store or online. And that's exactly why these made the list as a stocking stuffer this year. And the last gift idea, what do we have to finish it all off?
Nice, a borescope camera. Now this is a really nice borescope camera. It comes with its own screen, which is great, so you don't have to connect it to your cell phone or to a laptop. Sometimes they're wireless and they never connect. This takes video and pictures. It shoots at 720p. It has a light at the end of the camera. And this camera is autofocus. Let me show you how it works. So let's just say you want to look inside your frame rail and see the condition of the metal inside. That is a perfect use for this borescope camera. The camera on this is so tiny, it fits right into the vent hole in the frame rail. And oh man, check this out. This is so cool. Okay, so here's some actual footage from the camera going into the frame. And it definitely takes some getting used to when trying to aim this camera and push it in here. And you can see the condition inside the frame it looks really good for a 1996 with a little bit of surface rust on the bottom of the frame, but nothing crazy. The top still has that factory paint and it's looking really good. So that was really neat to see. And that's just one use for this camera. Now the camera comes with a magnet and a hook attachment so you could try to retrieve stuff in hard to reach places and a 90 degree mirror that way you could see sideways and they all attach right to the end of the camera. Now the autofocus camera is great but it doesn't fit into those tight spark plug holes. So they do sell a thinner one that you could attach and you can see it has a camera on the side and a camera on the front. The side camera is good for looking at valves and this will fit down into your spark plug wells no problem. Let's look at how thin it is. Let me show you. So let's extend the ratchet to break loose the spark plug. Good, and now let's collapse this, loosen the plug the rest of the way, and let's remove the plug from the engine. Okay, now we can insert the camera into the engine and check this out. So we're using the sideways camera here and you can clearly see that valve, which is really neat. And that valve is looking actually pretty clean. I thought there'd be more carbon deposits on it, but I don't see that much buildup at all. Not bad. Now how cool is that? You get to see into the engine, see the valves, and this borescope camera is great. You get to see into places no other camera could go, and that's exactly why it makes the list this year. Okay, Cooper, our last stocking stuffer, what do you think it is? Sounds like a paint can. Let's see what we got. Ah, it's not a paint can. We were tricked. It's cavity wax, which is actually a good idea. Okay, and the last gift to unwrap, Cooper, so make it a good one. All right, some long applicator wands for the cavity wax. So this is a great gift idea for anybody who likes to hold onto their vehicles for a long time and prevent rust. And you can get these spray nozzle wands which come in different lengths and they are awesome for getting behind body panels or deep into the frame of your car or truck. That way you can prevent rust. Let me show you how it works. So for example, you can see how this is getting all rusty here. Eventually that'll rust to the outside of the rocker and that wouldn't be good. Now technically you're supposed to clean all this off. If you're gonna do it on your car, power wash this off. That's all dirt and stuff. Right now it's below freezing, so I'm not gonna do that. I just wanna show you how this works. So we just have the regular cap on here and all you have to do is spray down the area, get it coated, and you can see how it's an oily, waxy material and it absorbs right into the metal. Now this isn't paint, so if there's rust already, it absorbs into the rust and prevents it from rusting further. And that's why it's important to clean this off because you don't want to trap any moisture. But I think that gives you a good example of what the consistency looks like. Let me show you how to use this when the frame is solid and there's only a little hole to stick the wand into. So my Hummer is the perfect candidate for this treatment. So let's go under the car and check out the frame. This frame rail is an enclosed tube. It's not like a C channel where you could spray inside. You have to spray inside this little hole. That's our only access point. So all you need to do is get the long spray wand and push it into the hole and get it in there as deep as you can. Then you just press the nozzle on the can, slowly pull out, and the inside of the frame is getting coated with that oily, waxy, anti-corrosion coating. Just so you get an idea of what this looks like, I put the borescope camera in the frame. That way you can see how it sprays. You can see it's not perfect, but it's still pretty good. It's coating the entire inside of the frame, and this isn't bad for how cold it is outside. I bet you in warm weather, this applies a lot better. Now let's real quickly spray in the other direction inside the frame, and you can see the nozzle is at the bottom this time, and it's working really well, especially since most of the rust that we saw was at the bottom. And after the spray settles, look at how everything is coated. That's really cool to see. So now on the interior of this entire frame section, right here all the way down, we have a coating which will prevent rust. That way it won't rust from the inside out. So this is the perfect gift idea for someone who likes to keep their car for a long time and they wanna make sure they prevent rust. And that's exactly why it made it as a stocking stuffer this year. So there you go, that's this year's top five Christmas gift ideas for car guys and car girls like you. And I hope this video is helpful. If you guys end up getting the ratchets, please leave a review, it helps me out a lot. And also let me know what you think. If you have any other tool ideas for me to create, put it down in the comments, I wanna hear about it. And also, if you end up getting this book, let me know what you think, leave a review and give me some ideas 
of what other books to write. I have how to super clean your car and how to change your oil coming up next. As always, I hope the video was helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider hitting that subscribe button. And I hope you guys have a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah. And if you don't celebrate either, enjoy time with your friends and family and Happy New Year.